Hi, I'm Liz Cully, and welcome to a special episode of Cool, Cool, Cool. In this series of episodes, I chat with cool people about parenthood. From my fears of getting pregnant to selecting a donor to how to juggle a career and a family, we talk about it all, and nothing is off limits. I was looking for a podcast that represented more of what I experience in the world, and I couldn't find it, so naturally, I decided to make it myself. So, welcome to, I guess, an adult version of Cool, Cool, Cool. It only makes sense for my first episode of what I've loosely called, I'm scared to have a baby. I sit down with two of my dear, dear friends, Erica and Jocelyn. I met Erica and Jocelyn when I first moved to Los Angeles. I actually met Erica first, and then I met Jocelyn. Jocelyn was the storm manager and one of the head butchers at Erica's butcher shop uh, called Lindy and Grundy, which was an LA institution. And I had met Erica, because she was coming into the restaurant I had worked at, which is called Son of a Gun. And I thought she was so cool and I wanted her to be my friend. And so I convinced her to be my friend. And then Jocelyn became my friend. And I love them both very, very dearly. And I'm really happy that they ended up together after all this time. They've gone through so many restaurants and ventures. They're the butcher girls. You might have seen them in Bon Appetit. You might have seen them on like Chopped and fucking... Actually, I don't know if they've been on Chopped. I need to know if you've been on Chopped or not. Erica's definitely been on Top Chef, which is iconic, but they've been everywhere. Vulture, I mean, like goes on and on and on and on. New York Times, LA Times, like you name it, you name it. Eater, like all of it. They have a sandwich shop at Pier 57 called Du Madre, which is delish. 10 out of 10 recommend. But really, they're, they're partners through and through, and they have two of the cutest kids I have ever seen in my whole life. And What I love about them both is that they're both very anxious like me. They both used Seattle Sperm Bank, which we'll talk about, like me. But I knew they would give it to me straight. And they're doing a very different thing than Rachel and I are doing. So I wanted to hear about, you know, and they had both very different experiences as well, which you'll hear all about. But I love them. I trust them. And I thought that they would be a perfect pair to start off this special series. So enjoy. You guys are my first episode of my mini series within my series called I'm Scared to Have a Baby. That's the full title. Is there an ellipsis in the middle? I'm scared. Don't be scared. No, it's terrifying. I think this is why I had to have both of you here. In some ways. But it's lovely in other ways. Like I would totally be pregnant again. You wanted to be pregnant. I remember. No, she was one of those cute ones, though, that like you don't know from the back. It's just going to all spread. Yes. It's going to spread Z's. And That's then there's spread. like the the gift that keeps giving, like messed up stuff that keeps happening towards the end. And you're like, what? Like what? Like I have an umbilical hernia even now. And it oh, didn't show no. up until two years after I had Nina. And she looks at it and she'll be like, poke, 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 poke. I'm like, dude, don't touch my stuff, man. And she's like, but it hurts and it's weird, you know? Like, you're all, you also like got pregnant pretty easily right on yes. the first go. Hurdle, myrtle. Like, what the fuck? Wait, where are you at? Okay. Yeah. I'm at, um, so getting sperm from Seattle Sperm Bank, which you guys also did. Yes. Best. I Have you read their Yelp reviews? <laughs> no. Okay. Because the first, <laughs> at least six years ago, the first Yelp review is some guy that said, my favorite place to hang out. So Stop. I was like, Who the fuck is this guy? Is he our donor? <laughs> he might be. You'll I don't think know. he is. I, well, so they're chill though. They're really nice. They're lovely people. I it's like also cheaper ha- than everywhere else. Yeah, they're just kind and they're cool. I had talked to some other banks and I wasn't feeling it. Um, yeah. so really loved them. And also, I like the fact that they're not in Los Angeles and everyone's not an actor. That was also very like I have enough oh. personality. Nobody else needs to be an actor in our family. Interesting. I was a failed one. It's fine. Like now I'm a Wait, podcaster, so- which is like the trajectory of a failed actor. Um, and someone Fair. with um, people body admit dysmorphia. that on a on a sperm thing. Oh, big time! It's all if you look at the other bank, like it's just actor or like I went to USC and I'm like, mm, I'm cool off yeah. USC. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that yeah, gives yeah. me like. Kavanaugh, like I'm like bad. Kavanaugh? You know, like the dude. Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. 
Brett Kavanaugh oh. vibes. There are many captains. <laughs> you know what in I'm the saying? World, like, I, like I don't yeah. know, like Murdaw, like right. murderers. Um, so I they just, went to USC. No, I just it's oh, okay, same sure, Z's. Sure. Scary white men. Um, who oh. don't respect people's. Are boundaries. you going to go for a whitey? Well, so that is what's interesting. Is I st- the thing I was going to ask you about is I was looking, and for me, I didn't do any filters at first. Right. It's a lot of like kind of weird white guys. Yeah. But I found one that I'm kind of excited about. Can I see his face? No. Oh my God, (laughs) Jocelyn, not yet. This is the most fun part. I know, but Rachel is lagging on looking. I'm like, can you look? please look at this? Because we've been like working on the house so much. She's like, okay, okay. I'm like, no, no, you need to look at this. Wait, wait, wait. I this isn't like, a group activity. Like you're not, not doing yet. It I started because okay. she's so, so like ADD. I I'm gonna also like gently guide her because okay. I'm a little nervous. Well, like your body, your choice. My body, my choice. But it's also like a family thing, right? But the guy that I found, mm-hmm. Native American, okay, Portuguese, okay. Mexican, and white. Okay. Yep. No, not into, and he's a doctor. Well, it's it's hard, and a right? personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, I think that could be very. I don't see, but you saw adult pictures because I can no, only no, see no, baby no, no. pictures. Only like baby and toddler. Yeah. What? But, mm, well, so well, Eric and I, we basically treated it like online shopping. Like we would get really high and sit on the couch and like flip. Yeah. Well, that's what she needs to do. I also kind of, well, so, and I also listened to his voice interview. Oh. Oh, I didn't get a voice I interview. Like yeah, you do. Yeah, you could have. More now they do. Now they do full on. It's like, a, it's like a podcast. Somebody sits there and they ask them about like, why are you doing this? What were you like as a child? Like, what are you into? The, there was a couple of things that I liked. Mm. Good. One, he should. sounded kind. Two, he's like, my partner and I just. We have the ability to have children, but we've decided that that's like not for us. Like we're both doctors. Like we don't right. want to. Fair. He likes to help his community. The only thing that somebody w- that they asked, they said, if you weren't going to be a doctor, what would you like to be doing? And he was like, I really am, like love being a personal trainer. And I was like, no, I want that. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. But like if, if I had a child that would like get me into shape, that would be Fucking amazing. They're like, come on. Granted, Nina it, did give me 10. It's she like, and I were playing a game of tag the other day, and she was like, if I catch you, you have to do five jumping jacks. And she Nina caught said me. That? Yes. Dead ass That's caught my girl. me and was like, five jumping jacks. And then I like took a beat and then she poked me with a pinata stick and said, I'm watching you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so I kind of did get a personal trainer. You did. Totally. What I. I- Wait, Sorry, you ahead. have to let her go. So, <laughs> like, I have so many. My big question <laughs> is because this reminds me of like, you know, when like because we have been looking a lot at puppies. Not that we're ready for puppies, but. Oh, I have a lot to say okay. about that. So, but <laughs> in the like world of like. But they in the- are. Wait, pause. Tio, Erica, I'm sorry we're talking <laughs> over you, but I got destroyed on a podcast for saying I think puppies are sometimes harder than children. And Start I just. Start that other miniseries. Puppies are harder. Yeah, thank you. That'll be next once I have the kid. Okay, Erica, continue. But like in the world of like how mutts are better genetically, right? Let's bring it to this. Yeah. So like for me, I think I would struggle like as as a person of color, right? Uh, Miscellaneously brown, we'll say. I struggle sometimes with like white folks being like, oh, I can just kind of like choose to have a donor who's a person of color. And then suddenly like it starts to put you in this like, space where you're a white parent to like a yeah. mutt child and you're don't say much child <laughs> it's terrible but to like never quite understand the experience of your own kid and what they yeah. might go through and maybe you do learn over the course of it but then suddenly like maybe you get to play the card which gives me a bit of a time it gives me a hard time but at the same time i think that when you're looking at like the in like the health of your child and like the genetic kind of like you know how far your child can go like in a sense having that diversity in like gene pool is fantastic right like it's actually really good for your kid to have all that i mean i mostly just fuck black dudes back in the day (laughs) so let's be real here that's a story you could tell your child i just really find black men so beautiful and so perhaps i could have had a right 
child that was half black. That being said, I hear you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And there are plenty of like, as you guys know, Asian donors, black donors, Hispanic, like whatever. Of course, yeah. And I thought it was interesting in this guy's interview, he's like, you know, my dad for all intents and purposes was like a white guy, like from I think wherever he said Midwest. They're very clear to not give descriptors even though I was like, yeah. I'm like, did you say Minneapolis? Like, right, what do you mean? Right, but right, obviously right. it's anonymous. But also I feel like with 23 and me, like the jig is up. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, 100%. And like, I know somebody swab, that found- Swab, 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 find all of your cousins. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, well, there's, so, oh it's, my God. You guys, I, our neighbor it, during the pandemic, this woman, she was probably, I don't know, early 50s. Uh, we would see, speaking of dogs, our we had adopted dogs <laughs> at the same time. We would see her- you know, masks on. People started to not wear masks outside. We were chatting and she kind of, she was like a graphic designer in her 50s. You know mm. what I mean? Like whatever. She goes, yeah. do you want to hear the craziest story? Yes. We were like having wine on the stoop. She's like, my dad was this like renowned OBGYN gynecologist in Texas. And I, he died however many years ago. I did 23 and me. Bing, bing, bing. Tw over 20 half siblings he was injecting his clients with his nope ay, ay, ay. with his sperm instead of dang, dang. dang. Yeah. and they and then she like ran into a couple and now they all go on like a retreat every summer i mean so that's, that's terrifying to me as well no but it's fun well so what are you to have a bunch of siblings? No, dude. That you just don't know so about. So what Seattle, well, <laughs> what Seattle sperm make, which is dope is they have like a facebook group which we haven't joined yet because we're like establishing our family unit, but then you can like go on a Facebook group and meet all the half sibs. I'm like cool off that for him. I get it. I no, know but why you would. Eventually, I feel like it's great. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you're like, I need a kidney. Like I'm. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. That to me is still a little different than like oh, one day kind of being hoodwinked, essentially, right? Like our friend, you you know our friend Claire. Yeah, she found. Her sister Rebecca that way, and they're only like a year apart. Oh we're God, now they look bros, so with much alike. The real Becky Sue, like hardcore, like we're all Whoa. homies, and it's great. But like, yeah, they they didn't meet until they were in their twenties. So My mother's primary concern when I told her we were going to get a sperm donor and have a family was that one day our children would accidentally make out with their. Okay, siblings. so that is also <laughs> why I decided to not do California, living in oh, California. Yeah. Because huh. I figured it would be a little bit of, I mean, I know multiple people. I know someone in New York who had a business meeting in LA and they had to move it to the house and the child walks out and she goes, and she said her heart sank, realized that they had used the same sperm donor. Like, what are the chances but of that? But why would your heart sink? Well, not sink, but like, maybe she was just more like a taken back. Maybe not sink is the right yeah, word. Yeah, it's a gut but it's punch. Like whole, yeah. Yes, well, like why? a gut because you're like, what the fuck, dude? Who cares? They're different kids, right? I don't give a fuck. I yeah. don't know. I tried to pawn off my extra vial on you. I might take it. Like, why you not? We have it. really fucking cute kids. You have, we can have like, literally the cutest sibs. kids. Like the ever. more the literally Wait, the more the merrier. To Joanna me, call it's like it? a party. Like what does everybody call in it? the pool. Uh one of my best friends calls our sperm donor the rising tide because he raises all ships because our kids are so fucking cute. They are just they're cuter I mean, than us. 100 so like better well they're also like little children so oh God, who they're knows so cute. but like they are i mean i couldn't handle nina's person i mean That's i was insane. just like "Ooh, are we like twin flames like mm. okay i want to talk really quickly though about my donor selection yeah because okay, erica yes. you bring up like a really a really great point about like being a white woman having privilege looking at different donors Yes. For me, they were all mostly white guys on there. Not all, as I mentioned, there was like right. other, but like mostly white guys. I want to make sure my child is attractive like yours. Yeah. And your donor is mixed, right? Half Japanese. Okay. And then half like whatever. Yeah. Fucking like. But actually half Japanese and half, what are you? Scottish. Scottish, English, Irish. Whatever. Same. See? Yeah. It's what we went for though. We like looked for that on purpose. But so Nina is half Japanese because Erica carried her. Right. And then Huey is a quarter. That little Huey. Oh my God, he's so fucking cute. I mean, he is just it's that insane. little bowl cut. I can't handle it. I'm just going to sit here and cry the whole time. That's the other thing that's happening to me is I don't really want to be pregnant, but I 
we all know children love me, but like also I cry when I hang out with kids. And oh. I'm like, maybe that's something that's telling me. Well, so when Erica gave birth, I was a puddle. Like I did not stop crying. I still cry constantly. The but nurse- like the nurses would be like, she w- had fucking like anti-clot like shit on her legs. You had just had a C-section and I was sobbing. And the nurses would come in and be like, sh- like looking at Erica being like, is she okay? Like, they were like, are you going to be okay with this going on in this room? <laughs> kind of like, I was, was like, just like insane so emotion. happy. Yeah. I was just like about to get my period and that's not fair. But it was a lot of emotions. Okay, but so wait, real quick. Do I, do you think I should just go? I mean, we'll see what Rachel says. She has to be involved in this. I also kind of, again, not to like make light of it, but I did kind of like look for who I would think was attractive. You should. Because you I'm should. like, well, yeah, just, like looking at it's toddlers hot. being like, yeah. <laughs> I was more just like that kid could potentially grow up to be a very hot man. Because sure. some of them weren't. Some of them, those softball oh. photos really, mm, I was like, that softball. kid looks like a murderer. Yeah. No, I mean, look, it's like, it's hard. Yeah. Like, I, what do you, how do you pick? How do you know? I mean, I mean, we didn't, we had an easy time because we were like, we need to have Japanese dude. And there was one. And he turned oh. out to be fucking cute and, we looked, and great and six foot two and like science and whatever. But we also looked you in could Seattle. You have it. Because- it's free. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Because Seattle, you know, geographically had the most like Japanese immigrants at a certain point in time, right? Like in in California too, but like there's such a big community of Japanese folks in the Pacific Northwest that it made a lot of sense to start looking in that area. Oh, and that's really so much cheaper than the other one. It is cheaper, and then of ultimately, you know, my mom gave us sperm for Christmas as a present, which was oh, that's so nice. So it was like five vials. She was like, "Here, hopefully, this will do the trick, and if not, then Jocelyn will have some too." Because we always intended on using the same donor. We always intended on both carrying. Rachel does not want to carry. Or does want to carry? Absolutely not. Okay. Which is annoying because I'd like to have two kids, and the idea of being this old. And having, I mean, you're being, not old, but yes. Okay, I am. <laughs> Botox filler. Thinking about a Botox? half face lip. So much Botox. Oh God, I want it so. Bad. So much filler. Take me with. I you. had a dream that Erica and I got Botox on like side by I side. I asked for it for my birthday. You get would. It. it would be amazing. So you had five vials total, but did you have to go buy more? Yeah. Okay. My body was not as cooperative. It took me five tries. IUI. Yes. I was like, this was like last chance IUI and then before you I was going to do IVF. IVF. Because the fucked up part about America is that straight people can be like, we've been fucking for six months and trying to get pregnant. It hasn't worked. Now we have to do IVF. And then at least in New York State, your insurance will cover it. But if you're in a same sex yep. couple, I know. you have to like try five times with the doctor before your insurance will cover IVF. California? If it covers IVF. Yeah, if it covers IVF. I mean- Something really amazing happened last week. I don't know if you saw this. I really had like a elite lesbian. I met Sarah Paulson this morning. Oh, I'm having cute. like the Dude. most lesbian <laughs> week of my life. Yeah, um, I feel like there was some like Kate moaning. Some, oh yeah, like, there there, some we're best friends now. Yeah. But okay. the best yeah, she's, she's and most exciting Sorry. part, it's fine. Just I'm riveted. Out. It's great. Yeah, so interesting. Um, is that my former gynecologist who had retired i invited to my event she came and she told me she is back working and she's in she started she's angeles. in los angeles she started the women's medical group in los angeles the first ever all women cool OBGYN yeah. gyno office she's like the shit and she was like i don't but it's so interesting she's like i don't know don't you want to just like do ivf and get it over with and i'm like i no. don't have 30 40 thousand dollars so what you have to do is there's this thing called the hsg yes which like they put some sort of chemical oh it's like blue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and they make sure your tubes or whatever so like literally though once they do it it's like a fucking it's like a enema cleaner. yeah for your your junk and then I swear to God, you get pregnant. We all have a weird theory about it. Meaning like you the did that us. and then you got pregnant the next time. Yeah. In tr- I mean, I've been doing acupuncture every week. With I did my acupuncture. Homie Russell. You did? That yeah, I did yeah. fertility acupuncture. I've been doing it as well. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So you always both wanted to get pregnant. Do you feel like each, do you have any like primary parent stuff? Like birthing parent, like do you feel like Nina is more bonded to you in Definitely. some ways? 
I think what and I does also that bother you? If she does, if she is, I think of it bothers you it until to... you had Huey. No, I mean it still sometimes does because I'm the bad cop too. So there's like layers. Are you? Yeah, that tracks. Um, yeah. Um, it sucks being the bad cop. Sucks. Look, I think um, hormonally speaking, when you are the birthing parent, right? Because we have this unique experience where, and we talk about it with a lot of other parents, and they're kind of like shocked that I've had the experience of both being the birthing parent and not. So like it creates a very different hormonal balance structure well, in like our relationship. Like when Nina was a newborn, I thought it was so easy. Right, but also <laughs> when you're the birthing parent, you're the nester, right? And when you're the non-birthing parent participating in that birth, you're the provider, right? So you go through this like massive identity shift. Like when Huey was being born and Jocelyn was in the hospital and then Huey was in the NICU and all this stuff, like I like went into this crazy place where I was like, I have to provide for them, like in a very different way than the way I experienced my own birth, right? Like it was mm. not nearly as like tender and like it was massively emotional, but in such a different way where I was like, it, I was more concerned about like money and insurance and like, yeah, like all the like, li like little right. things. And I feel like you were going through that. When well, I it was, was also like a pretty fucked up situation. Yeah, completely. But, but like I didn't stop feeling like, I was like the sole provider, which is like fully bullshit and not true. But like I was like taking it on in that way. And I still do sometimes to now because I'm just kind of like and we talk about it a lot, like in our like world of like employment and like making money and stuff like that, where I'm con I'm constantly like I must take care of the family. And it's just like bizarre. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I had my druthers, I would literally just stay at home with the children. Would you? Oh, but it's because you're the day. more recent birthing parent. I felt like that the whole, like, until Huey was born, until you got pregnant. I felt that way. I mean, I felt that I was way like, before. fuck a career. I'm chill. I personally don't want to work, just generally <laughs> speaking. I would love to, <laughs> like, time. garden. What'd you say? Mom garden. time. Yeah. yeah, I'd garden and Mom I would you. like to just cook and yeah. chill and. I don't know, like play with animals. Yeah. I really like a horse. Mm. No, I, like I definitely do. Chickens and yeah, I want like yeah. chickens. Mm -hmm. I want like totally a pig. No. Mommy. No, don't I remember, you remember the her fucking pigs. They of course, were I remember the pigs. Yeah, your pigs were bad. <laughs> I hated those. It's because you had two. I think mm -hmm. they were. Uh, one was fine. Two is like gang mentality. Well, and my Similar friend to children. My friend who's lovely, who's a sex worker wonderful porn actress had two pigs and they were so naughty and she lived in this <laughs> West Hollywood apartment. You would you might know it, but it's a very iconic building near Sunset. Actually near um the Del Green Blatt's Deli. Oh where uh -huh. it's like almost mm. like a pinky color. Oh, yes. Do you know that apartment yeah, building? Yeah. She lived there and the pigs fucking opened up the screen door. She gets a phone call. Did they jump? The pigs were swimming in the pool, had knocked over everybody's trash had eaten They're frat and boys. rooted frat boys yes. and literally had rooted and compl and were had been peeing yeah. all along no, horrific. people's shit and they apparently fucked up this like original piping because of the Ooh, year, the chemicals mm -hmm, in their urine mm -hmm. and it was a whole thing anyway it was a long story uh listen to cool 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 for that story because we talked about it but okay so you get jealous sometimes of the relationship that erica has with nina I don't know that jealous is the word. I just feel like I'm great and that should you be are. recognized more often <laughs> I mean, by all, children. But, but what do you mean? mean? Like she's like, you're the mean mom? Well, so, yeah, no, because I like lay down the law and I'm the one that's like, go to bed, brush your teeth, stay alive and healthy and don't let your teeth fall out. And that is not fun for her all the time. But Nina also, like, don't get her wrong because she's so freaking smart. Oh, pfft. at five. I, I, I'm completely aware. But smart oh, she knows equals, how to push my motherfucking yeah, buttons. She's smart. a Scorpio, Aries rising, fucking Aries moon. We're totally, totally screwed. Like, so she's super manipulative because she's super smart. Yeah. And she knows how to, like, tug and play on Jocelyn's, like, sensitive little Pisces emotions. Oh, it's so effed time. to watch, dude, because she'll literally be like, man, man. Like she'll just like say stuff to her that's like, uh, 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 and then she's like, but in then the corner she crying. like crawls in my lap and she's like, "I love you," and I'm like, <laughs> "She could rob a bank." She in fact, I'm sort of wondering. I know it's her fifth birthday, but I'm wondering what her schedule like is tomorrow afternoon because I'd love to just like 
take her to Soho and see what we could get. Yo, take her to Bergdorf's. It's so funny. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I'm just wondering, like, mm, take her into Chanel and like, Yo, she's see what a we princess can pop out with. Yo, yeah. She God, loves she's it. She's tripping. What do they call, do they call you both mom? I'm mama. She's mommy. Although currently- I'm hoping I'm going to move into ma. Except Huey now. Okay, so I'll Wait, point at pictures. Ma? Of- yeah. Ma. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, Jocelyn. It makes on. sense. It come does on. make sense. It, does, it, it is on brand for you. Yes, 100%. Huey calls all three of us mama, just so you know. Who? Huey. Who's he also three? calls himself you mama. Mean and as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's I, mama. I point and he's like, mama, mama, ma. It's hilarious. I'm like, so how about you, mama? And I'm like, I think Nobody. he means like lovable, cute thing that is part of our family. So the biggest thing for me, I'm not worried about raising a kid. I've raised other people's great. kid. Thank yeah. you. I've raised other people's yeah. children. I think I'm going to be the mean parent. Yes, I you like are. actually know that I'm But going also to the be. mean parent is usually also like the fun make believe parent. Also better loved to be at the, at because it's it's real. Like the the attachment stuff is it's like better. A safety thing. I don't know. I think. I Wait, agree. So talk so, to me about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. No. Go ahead. <laughs> no. No. It's your I show. love. Being, no. Just, I love it. I mean, <laughs> why not? No. I. I want like a list of the shit you're scared of, and then I want to yeah, address okay. it. So it's really the pregnancy. Mm. Like, what is it's gonna fuck up your body? Gonna fuck up my body because I have eating disorders and body dysmorphia. Yes. It's going to be uncomfortable. I will time it. You have to time it so you're not like eight and a half months pregnant in August like she was. I think it at this point I keep fucking around with the time because of work, which is so fucked and a whole There's nother never conversation. A good time. There's yeah, never a good not, time. Yeah. So I'm scared about the like put do you have a vaginal birth? Fuck no. I almost died, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But neither one of us had vaginal birth. Nobody, I feel like I feel like the people that do have a vaginal birth, they fucking it rips. It's crazy. Well, yeah, I don't even so know I'm scared of works. a vaginal birth. Yeah. I'm scared. You don't have of to my... do it though. Yeah, you can totally go. I don't mind. Do, I don't mind. I'm not like you. Got to let go of that shit. Okay, so sorry. I have, I'm I also have some scared of them to say about that. But yeah, having a C-section and fucking up mm-hmm. my stomach muscles mm-hmm. that freaks me out too. I'm scared of dying in childbirth. Yeah, mm-hmm. fair. Which you can commiserate with. I'm also scared of breastfeeding. Die. Oh, it's yeah. No, it's I'm all scared. I'm of, here to tell you it's all scary, but it will also all fucking be fine. I mean, my friend's vagina falls out of her body. Or, oh, that's called like a protracted tube stop. Exactly. Something. And it's like if she goes to the bathroom and pushes too hard, she needs to get that it shit comes fixed. out. I know. I, I'm also scared of not being able to get pregnant. So like those are the scary okay. things. I think the so you're scared of, the, of everything until the child arrives. Like yeah, once until the child, the child is, well, arrives, and then the boobs, the yeah, boobs, yeah, the boobs, and then I think once the child arrives, I'm like, damn. Well, yeah, I'm not really scared about that. I I can't even really stay up late anymore. Like, like all the things that I'm like, what about my life? I'm like, I don't really have a life. No. I like, live in fucking Glendale and like fight with my neighbors. Like I don't. Right. That's like where my life. I don't miss You'll just any of that there. shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, but I don't, you never were really into like like socializing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So yeah, I mean, now I just get to like watch Disney cartoons and not feel weird about it, which is great. It is um, great. I so this might be TMI, but so I had my first HSG, which is like this radiologist. They like stick a balloon through your cervix to like put whatever chemical in your fallopian tubes and then they do like a sonogram yeah so my first one that i had done um was what like fucking may or june of 2020 and like no doctors were working this like dinosaur came out of retirement to do it i was like in the stirrups for over an hour no warning i'm putting in the fucking thing it hurt so bad and then he couldn't get the balloon through my cervix it was insane. And then the appointment ended by him not being successful looking at it and then saying, I mean, do you even have the parts to get pregnant? Like, Which is like a whole homophobic, up, not yeah, like, like very femme presenting experience that is abhorrent. Like horribly traumatizing. I feel like you're still traumatized. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. yeah. There's like fucked up shit that happens in the whole because it's an industry, right? Well, it's like the fertility industry. I know. They right. want to make that money. And then I went to this place, the place where it got you pregnant on the first try, which is like the yeah. fucking DMV. And I was like, I don't care. It doesn't need to be a personal interaction. Like, 
I just want to get pregnant and like move on with my life. And then I think because I didn't like that doctor so much, it never worked. So I switched places. I mean, it's the kind of thing where like when I went, they were like, they called me the first time saying, congratulations, you're pregnant. I was like, there's no way. And they were like, and it was before I'd been inseminated. They're like, you're pregnant because my levels or whatever. And I was like, no, not a chance. And they were like, but why? And I was like, because I'm gay and I'm not having like, like intercourse with men. So, and they were like, oh yeah, sorry. You were like stress pregnant. Yeah, but it wasn't real. You know what I mean? But they were like, oh, sorry, our bad. Like, it was just like, in what world, like, are you allowed to even like have these types of conversations? with Wait, well, it's very number driven. Like all of these places are very number driven. Like I switched to the other place. They let Erica come in the room. That's tight. And she got to fucking hit the plunger. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Which is cool. And, we were, so, and like, and there was a buildup. It's of still course. like there's fucking like eight weird students in there, like looking in your crotch. But Why are there students looking in your crotch? Because, because, because they were like following hospital, along yeah, and whatever. No, nah, it's a hard pass. I'm I didn't care. Like I was like, literally, don't give a fuck. But what was amazing though too is that that was how many times? Once that, there, that, right? But it was the fifth time yeah. she switched to this clinic, and it was like a much better experience. There was a lot more personal care, doctor. Oh right? My God. And but at so we were talking in the room with like the nurse practitioner and you know the students who were in there. We were talking she about was how full active wear, like big headphones in the elevator. And then I saw her ten minutes later in her whites, and I was like, this is weird. But so we were talking. <laughs> Let's make a baby. <laughs> about how in the vial, in the one vial, which is like such a small amount of sperm, it's actually like eight million sperm that are in there or whatever. And we were like, oh, that's but it's like, like pinky nail. But it's I mean, also I don't know how much sperm typically the comes population out. of like essentially New York City in this tiny little vial, you know. And so when I pushed the plunger, I was like, "Come on, New York!" Uh-huh. And all the and students like, were like, "What?" Yeah, they were like, "Okay." <laughs> like you were like announcing Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so weird. No, um, but there's shit. I mean, look, I think everything you're freaked out by is valid, fully. And I think it's things to talk to Rachel about, to talk to a therapist about. But it will all actually be okay. I do talk to my therapist about it and she's like, it'll be fine. I have well, a psychiatrist. Well, and I'm not going off antidepressants. I've decided that. Oh, I didn't go on until I was like in the depths of postpartum, which is another thing to think about. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll just <laughs> up it. Um, No, I'm not gonna go off of it. I should have been medicated like 20 years ago. I don't know how I've been functioning in the world without there. That's how medication. I felt. Yeah, yeah agree. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm like <laughs> hello um, but I love that doctor he's really funny um, he's just he talks like this and he's this super hot gay guy and like lives in Eagle Rock and I'm like yeah you're so hot that's amazing um, I mean maybe and- he's I know. Available. Well, my friend offered, but I was like, nah. No, keep I think, it clean. Yeah, I think that's the, I've already gotten over that hurdle. For right. some reason, I thought you used your friend from like Chicago. Don't mm-hmm. you have a friend in Chicago that's like your best friend? Am I making he this now lives in, in the Bay? He lives in the Bay now. Um, We did talk about it. Okay, and see, I was like, I was around for this. Okay. There was an initial conversation about it. And when we, when I started at the fertility clinic, they they actually offer like a lot of different like, you know, social services around mm-hmm. it. And they were like, honestly, it's much harder because A, you'll all have to get like extensive genetic testing no, to I make know. sure. Yeah. Because like they don't want to be held accountable yep. if like you end up with like yeah. a g- genetic, you know, issue there. A person we but, know bought sperm and then that sperm donor reported that his mother had gotten breast cancer yes. and then the sperm bank took it back. Oh, that's interesting. So she had to start the whole selection process again. Oh, for right. crying out. So yeah. that can happen too, but... But like, thank God. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Right? Ultimately, they were everybody like... everybody have cancer? They were like, if you if your donor is a known donor to you, then you have to always be able to have like so many other conversations and around it gets like... gets quarantined for six months. Yeah, it does. It gets quarantined for six months while they like wash it and do all the other things to it. Well, did you see that documentary on HBO about the family in San Francisco where the lesbians like used a gay friend of theirs and then he fucking got AIDS and went crazy and tried to steal the child back and she made a documentary about her life. I keep acting. What happened to the baby? She lives in also like Eagle Rock and- it's fine. Made a document. No. Oh, made the baby doc- made the doc. Yeah, she okay. made a documentary Oof. and had all these like voice ta- voice messages from her birth father. Like Jesus. they were all were like a happy family, and then he like lost it and was like, "You're my child," and like tried to right. sue for parental rights. And after I watched that, I was like, "Nope, 
It's That's not like, yeah, yeah. It's fucking confusing and like tricky enough raising a a child that you just don't need. You just need support to feel around you. Has Nina ever asked who her dad is? No. No. She does say oh, things God, like we had her watch Miracle on 34th Street. Oh. Where yeah. fucking Mara Wilson wants a dad for Christmas. And then she gets one and she's like, so where's and my Nina's dad? And Nina's like, dude? yo, I want a daddy. And I'm yeah. like, no, you don't, bitch. <laughs> They're like, two, two moms is so much better than one dad, yeah. you know, whatever. And she's like, uh. but she, But I have, I feel like I bring some dad energy I think you, to the table. You identify with the dad energy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Also, she has a lot of like men in her life. Yeah. Enough. She but does. she like literally like crawls into their laps and like turns into a little fucking marshmallow. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, she's a special kid. But how do you think you'll handle that? I mean, so we, you didn't have this when you were getting pregnant, but the doctor I worked with, they make you talk to a social worker. Yes. And so they talk about how you start using the word donor from the get. Really? Like, so Rena, we always tell her she dad, has donor yeah. bod because she has a fucking eight pack. Yeah, she really does. She's yeah. yoked. And we're yoked. like, donor must be yoked. Like, they both make a face that we call donor face. Like, yeah. And we just talk about it. That's and we really tell funny. her, like, <laughs> yeah. the donor is the person who made our family possible. That's it. Like, what if she wanted to ever meet him or, or she, Huey? I think they should. So Seattle Square Bank has an open identity. Yeah, we did an open ID thing. One. So yeah. she, she, like, when she turns That's 18, also she the question it. I liked how he answered it. Yeah. What, what did he say? say? He was like, listen, I, as a doctor, I can understand that it's really important for people to have an understanding of where they came from, not only from a medical perspective, but yeah. from an emotional one. So I would be open to that. I'd be open to, like, thinking about cool. that. And I was like, oh my God. Wait, what's his donor name? I don't know. <laughs> you're going to go look. And I definitely up. wouldn't say it on my podcast. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You can bleep it. Well, you can tell me that. I'll tell you later because we're friends. I um, still think you should take ours. But I'm but who, here's the thing. Also, let's see. Like, Rachel might be like, no, I definitely want this other one. This other one. And then we're going to fight about it. And I'm going to be like, I don't really care. It's my decision. I mean, we're already fighting about baby names. How did you guys handle that? We had a list. Mm-hmm. We had a, that we would both oh, yeah. add to like a notepad. And then we had a sudden death, which is terrible. Yeah. yeah. But like, like one day you can just go on the list and, and fucking delete, delete. No questions asked. Rachel has done that to every name I've brought up. What are your names? Well, for a girl, I like, she says absolutely not. I like Celine. Oh mm -hmm. my God. Yes. Thank you. I love Celine Dion though. I'm like a big Celine. Mine girl. is yeah. more like the French atelier, but mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> um, And I like Marlo. For a girl. That's cute. Yeah. That is cute. That's like you have to move to Brooklyn if you name your child Marla. I'm not moving to Brooklyn. <laughs> Rachel doesn't like any girl names. The only one that she's sort of down for is my aunt who lived in Mexico, who I was very close to. Her name is Lo. L oh, I like O W E. Oh. Yeah. I love that. That's cool. And so she's like, that's the only one I like. That's a gr that's great. So that'll probably you be only it. need one. Yeah, so, but you you are primarily looking at girl names. Is are you set on having a girl? It's weird because we only looked at girl names when it was Nina, and then we only looked at boy I names. I sort of would like to have a girl. I mean, that makes to the like, most sense. Change the wrongs that uh, were my I know, mother you're in relationship fuck them up in a different way, though. I know that's the thing. And then Rachel only likes boys' names, and they're in sane like, and strange God. she has two oh, and she says God. they have to be one or the other and i'm like this is so crazy and so biblical oh. gabriel or dominic okay i like dominic so do i yeah that's the only one i'm she's like dom but then Isn't like that dominic cute? the donkey like the italian christmas donkey what there's a great I would christmas sing it song for you, you should listen to it later. okay i don't know about that but she like loves dominic and i'm like i went to catholic school like you're no, dominic's cute yeah are you gabriel? gonna hyphenate i don't know well what did you guys do it's Nakamura guest, no, no hyphen, hyphen, because yeah. a friend of ours, also Claire, said that the hyphen fucks up the whole passport process. I So I know that it's important that your children have both of your last names somewhere in their passport. That yeah. is what and I think. And then you yes. also, Rachel needs to go and adopt this child. Because you guys adopted each other's children. I'm She's actually in the just about to adopt adopting Huey. Huey. Yeah. Because shit, people are like, you're on the birth certificate. And it's like, that shit does not matter if you yeah. break down in a car and someone, God forbid, gets hurt in, in like, someplace scary. Iowa. I think California, I mean, California, Anywhere, everywhere literally is not true. great. Like, it depends on who you're around, yeah. <laughs> do you ever get any weird, comp like, how do you deal with kind of the either 
insensitive or just straight out homophobic? Like, do you receive any of that for being queer parents? We did. We did a lot we when still we do. When lived, lived outside of the city. city. I yeah. remember you talking about being yeah. pregnant and that was tough. It was especially tough for me looking the way I do being pregnant and maternity wear is not kind. It's not. And my I sister actually suggested I wear some um here wasted dresses. And I was like, when I was pregnant, <laughs> oh, we... that's all I wear. <laughs> the fuck? Yes, you <laughs> fine. Great. Me? Oh my I god. Was like, I'm you dead. tripping, bro. <laughs> Yo, when I was pregnant, we had to go to eight weddings during my pregnancy and I was like and it was AKA like oh, I remember that DeVito DeVito like era. yeah I was like Penguin. I'm gonna look like motherfucking Danny DeVito oh, at like circa I should have dressed up as like the goblin was like, who's Batman. the guy the joker oh yeah it was awful <laughs> and like and, and this one girl was like well you should just wear a caftans and I was like Huh? Literally the shit that comes you out of people's mouths and then after Nina was born when she was around one this mm-hmm. was like harmless and not intentional but we took her to the pediatrician and the nurse was like asking you the questions like, does she do this? Does she do this? And then she was like, does she say mama and dada? And we were like, just mama. And, and she, she was like, was like right. Yeah. And yeah. then she was like, ooh. Because she felt bad, you know? Yeah, that's pretty. The, it was harmless, but harmless. it was cute. Right. But there were definitely some dicks like in a grocery store that like Nina would like try to wave at people and then they would like. Look at her, look at us, and then like not say hello to her. And it's like if you <gasps> no, fuck I with can't. my child. No, no, no. no. I mean it's lights out murder. Everyone's yeah. dying. You Call nine one one. I'm gonna fucking go to jail. You, you don't ha- want to do that in front of your kid. Like you don't wanna like you know what I mean? Like you're like you want them to think everything's perfect and everything's yeah. great. At least when they're fucking two. You know what I mean? Like we had Nina in a stroller once in a grocery store pushing her. Oh, this happened a lot. And this lady was like went to go look inside the stroller and she goes, oh, it's a baby. Like thinking it was like going to be a puppy or she something. Always I was thought like, what the People F? were like, what kind of dog all the time? Yeah. Wait, that's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's like so default peculiar. was Pomeranian. Really? In a, yeah, insane. I don't know. But it's like you just, you kind of have to shield them from it, I think, is what you do. But look, like last year, you know, at Nina's preschool, they invited us to come in and it was actually this year, calendar year, but they invited Jocelyn and I to come in during Pride Month and do like a presentation for the kids about like being gay. And we were like, okay, how is this going to go down? Right. What? Yeah. Like, I don't know if I would have. Did you do it? Yeah. Yeah. We like read a book and then we gave all the kids. We really like Madonna. Heart shaped eyeglasses, like sunglasses and boas. And then we had a dance party to Queen. Yeah. It was great. And I totally like checked. I was like, you're going to be gay. You're gay. You're gay. <laughs> Already gay. Gay, gay, gay. <laughs> and then there were some people I was like, you're so straight. <laughs> and you just turned them all into like mini Elton Johns. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was super fun. fun. Yeah. But we didn't like, you know, have this like big, heavy conversation with them about like how it feels for us to actually, you know, be gay parents, but more like love is love kind of vibes. Right. You know what I mean? Well, oh what God, was the presentation? Mari, um. We read this book, I'm forgetting the guy's name, which makes me terrible, called like I Am a Rainbow. Oh, God. It's like this half Japanese dude oh, from cool. Hawaii and Nina He's like a and Huey dancer. are both He's in like Japanese yeah. schools. So it was great because like, I mean, I know like you growing up in Japan, you don't see all the gays yeah. out and about and proud. Yeah. So it was like cool to be like, here's a half Japanese person who is not only gay, but they wrote this kid's book. And it's Oh, like, I know what you're talking about, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's cool. It's a great little book. Do you think Nina's gay? No. no. I don't think so either. No. Huey TBD. Yeah, he Hughes? has his moments. He's a little young, no? I guess you could tell from the get. I don't know. It's hard because you can just like read into everything. But That's I don't know true. if anybody would have thought I was gay at that age because Nina and I have very similar interests. Um, <laughs> tool, uh, manipulation, <laughs> glitter, uh-huh, uh-huh, nail polish, uh-huh. makeup. You she know. Also, does my makeup all the time. I think she's kind of like unaware that we are actually like in a romantic relationship. I don't think she really has well, the other, extracted that. The other day she was like, well, Minnie Mouse and Daisy Duck can't be together because they're two what? girls. And I was like, Bro, you know, like mommy and I are a thing, right? And she was like, "What?" Like she just so like confused. doesn't clock it. And yeah. I'm like, "Fine, okay." But like, that's sapphic so funny. Some of her, ugh, yeah, we need heart. some sapphic cartoons for her. Well, now there's gays on Peppa. <laughs> yes, gay, gay polar parents. bears. Yeah. Do you guys listen to Kids Bop? No. 
Mm-mm. Good. So okay. Nina's I don't favorite want to do the- song mm. for a long time was uh, Adele. Wet Dream by the band Wet Leg. Do you know this? Yo. What's it's a great song. No. Our wet Legs, Wet Dreams. <laughs> so the song is called Wet Dream. It's by two English gals mm-hmm. named uh, wet, leg. wet Leg. And she, because it like came on XMU one day and she was like, yo, I like this song. And I was like, thank Christ. So we would always listen it to it. Like it sounds kind of like Latin Grit. Like it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's but it, fine. But the, she really likes Phil Collins. She mm-hmm. really likes Who doesn't Queen. like Phil Collins? Yeah. She Who loves doesn't like Queen? Studio's her favorite song. Huey really likes Motown. Air. Oh, yeah. But I feel like if you go into Kids Bop, you did it to your damn self. Like, I agree. I play her the real Lizzo shit. I play her well, like- Well, Lizzo is Kids the Bop. The real- I, But I, like, I play her like- it. No need to put Lizzo into <laughs> Kids Bop because her music is Kids Bop already with a couple of curse words. Right. But yeah, like yeah. she gets the curse words and like she doesn't, she loves Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style? Yeah. yeah. You know that song from I like 2005? Like, yeah, I think you could retire that. We're getting there. I know, but once she has a hold of it, it's She likes like, Daft Punk. She does, yeah. All right, so you're doing the work. I mean, we're trying. As long as it's not like the like ring around, but know, so, the, whatever, it's right. just like I can't handle I all think that's also stuff. like deeply sad. All those children's yeah. songs yeah. are like pretty fucked. I mean, I grew up listening to Diana Ross, The Supremes, right. mostly Motown, totally. Shaped Who I Am. Right. My parents were like very into reggae and Boney M. And like, That's what's up. Yeah. She Sailors. likes Sister Nancy a lot. Oh, okay. Like yeah. the Bomb Bomb song. Yeah. She calls who doesn't it. like yeah. that song though? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> exactly. yeah. you have to have She's taste, down. you know? But yes. she, so we named her for Nina Simone and Huey for Huey Lewis. So they kind of have to get down. Damn, San Francisco legend, Huey Lewis. Oh, Yo, yeah. all American dream, that guy. Baseball player, Dartmouth grad. Lives in Tahoe now. <laughs> Ooh, that's aspirational. Yeah, no, oh, I know. I know yeah. all yeah. too well about that's all of funny. this. Um, how has being a parent changed you? I mean, endlessly, I think. I don't care about anything else. Okay. Kind of. I mean, your identity shifts like in such a big way. It's funny you were saying earlier about how you care less about like your own personal, like who you'll be like as a parent. I'm just coming out of that now where like I really didn't care. And now I'm actually kind of like craving more of a social life of my own um, and like friendships of my own. That's and why like you not to LA and come be with me. Go just ahead. spending time with kids. Although the time that I do get with just my kids I'm just like I want it to be fully like uninterrupted like you know what I mean like nothing else really matters and it's kind of an incredible feeling right because you feel so like like invincible in that space and it's like such a powerful thing but then when you kind of leave that bubble I for me I'm just kind of like like I want to be able to like have some wine and hang out and like feel a little tipsy and Smoke feel those like little low dose pre rolls. Did you love them? No, oh. love them. They're they have they live here half the like half the time That's now, amazing. so we can hook you up with that. We again. went to the Housing Works dispensary the other day and got half milligram banaca. It's like mouse spray. Right? Yeah, so great. It's good. But um, I think it. I think being a parent makes you a better person in a lot of ways because I always think like, oh god, what if Nina saw me acting like an ass? Totally. Like, like had a tood with her like school security guard the other day. Because I was like stressed out and she said something that annoyed me. And like, you know, when you can like say thank you to someone, but in like a tone, which is the extent of my I think my, I think, oh, I'm like my whole life is a tone. Exactly. Like a rude thank you. But then the next day I was like, fuck, I have to go and like apologize to her for like being rude. You know what I mean? Because I think like you're allowed to be rude and you're allowed to be a human, but you have to then do the right thing. I'm worried about the road rage for me. Oh, yeah. Nina says asshole and douchebag. Douche Cause I'm like, I will fucking kill you. Like driving, I'm like in my mom like SUV, blasting rap music around Glendale, just being like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. Like literally losing my mind. You and just have I- to say, don't say these words at school, or you won't get invited to birthday parties. That's what we tell her. Oh yeah, that's yeah. easy breeze. But we, you know, there was there was a day where I was driving Nina to school, and it was the first time where I noticed this exact thing where. Like I was, was like, like quietly, three. I was like quietly driving to school and I heard her in the back being like, hey, hey, asshole. Hey, yeah, you asshole. You <laughs> <I'm> asshole. <dead. laughs> like over and just over. Just trying and I was it like, on. Being I like, like, where do we say this? F- How do we say it? Like, and I was like, what did you just say? She was like, come on, asshole. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like so insane. 
And then later on, I went to pick her up from school and then I went to go get Jocelyn and Jocelyn's like, hey, asshole. And I was like, got it. Okay. Like, that's where it came from. She heard you say it the day before. It's like, that's all it takes. That's going to be a real problem. Blow up your spot. Big time. But it's so funny. And it's like so hard for us to not like start cracking up when our kids misbehave or like say like the wrong shit because it's so. Just don't video them. I have a friend who like videos her kid when he's naughty and he's Um, a monster. So just don't do that. No, yeah. You can't make it feel fun. Yeah. Well, but also, or like embarrass them publicly later. I like, hate when people will take videos of their kids when they're upset. Oh, me too. Yeah. You know what's actually the most triggering for me is when kids have like a birthday party and someone takes their face and smashes it in the cake. People oh. do that? Oh my God, it's all over the internet. It kills me. I hate <laughs> what it. What is the Even with kid adults. Do? I don't know. They're like cry and stuff. I hate it. I have saw a thing on Instagram must have been where some lady fucking walked out of her wedding after they were married and got annulled because the groom shoved cake in her face. Oh, come on. And I guess she had had like disordered eating or like some shit. And she was like, this is the one thing you cannot do at the reception. He fucking did it. And she was like, I'm oh. out. And this concludes and makes all of the sense because this is why two moms are better than one <laughs> and men are trash. And truth. There you go. Yeah. Except oh for God. Huey. He's the best. Yeah. He's very, he's like so mushy and cute. When's his birthday? February 24th. Yeah. Is he also a Pisces then? Mm. Oh, thank God. Ugh, terrifying. But they're both Aries rising and his moon is Sagittarius, which is terrifying. I'm an Aries rising and a Gemini moon. <laughs> so scary. It's the scariest, but we're very <sighs> focused. We're very work related. Apparently I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to be a real estate agent. That's the latest I I've seen. I see that. Good fallback. I, 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 I feel like it? this is like real estate chic. Sure. I'm into it. <laughs> you talk about that a lot. Yeah. You want to be a real estate agent? I would crush. Dude, move to LA. Why don't we become real estate oh agents? You want to start our own thing? Yeah. We could make Pork I know. That's what I think. Yeah. Do you not just love those two? Let me tell you, those two kids of theirs couldn't be cuter. Um, we did not end up going with the stoner in the end, <laughs> so I'm not worried that I described him to a T. He sold out, so that was the end of that. Check out their online presence all over the place. They also just launched a really cool like meal service in New York as well. So if you are in New York, which I know many of you are, check them out. And uh, I'll have all the links for all of their things uh, in the show notes. But really appreciate you guys listening. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the new special series. There will be regular cool, cool, cool episodes. So don't worry. But, you know, I got to give everybody a little bit of flavor, especially since my life is a little different than when I started this show. Anyway, um, make sure to go give me some stars on Apple, Spotify, use Liz Cully, cool, cool, cool. If that is where you listen to podcasts, sometimes I'm a little bit hard to find. And I'd love to see you on Patreon, which this whole video interview will live. Bye.